I remember being parts of those conversations about if we have a pandemic. But you know, in the back of your mind, you're thinking, we're planning for this, but this is never really gonna happen. This is what happens on television, right? It is uncharted territory. It still is today, 10 months in. And there was an article, and it was about this lengthy, about <clears throat> uh, a virus in China. You know, and you just, you know, you kind of store it away, but you don't make much of it. I would say somewhere between the 3rd and 5th of March, I recognized what was coming toward us. It felt like a locomotive. To see it unfold, you know, right before our eyes and be part of just trying to figure it out when things changed, not only on a daily basis early on, but hourly things could change. On that Wednesday, I announced um, to campus, including to the deans, and that moment will forever be with me. The pandemic was sweeping across the country. We knew that, you know, going suddenly remote was going to affect virtually everything we did. How do we engage people remotely? Many of us, including me, had to learn how to use technology in ways that we've never had to use it before. These are critical years for them, and they, and they go by quickly. And we didn't want this year, this semester, to be a moment where things really uh, completely came to a grinding halt. We also were having to adapt at this very rapid pace because every day it seemed like something new was happening. The pandemic preparedness team pulls together. The emergency team pulls together. We have scientists in the labs who suddenly go to work, you know, making sanitizer and wipes out of nothing. That's what I like to refer to as the land grant spirit, right? Some of the best and brightest minds, not only in our state, but in our country, are working right here very hard on this pandemic every single day. From that point on, Alan Rudolph started to really organize the researchers that we have in campus, particularly around infectious disease. Then the research team was able to provide the leadership team, the pandemic preparedness team, information that it needed to be able to advise me. And so having those two teams in place made a huge difference. Higher education in many ways really drove some of the early and later stage knowledge about the disease itself. We can boast about a lot of the work that has been done with COVID and I think the university should feel pretty good about that, should feel pretty proud about that. Um, but COVID revealed not just what was happening as a result of COVID, but, but some issues that had been there all along. We were all at home, like waiting and thinking about different things. And that was like in the middle of when the George Floyd video came out. So it was like, my friends and I are sitting at home with nothing to do. It was just like in a year where nothing was going the right way, it was interesting to see how many people showed up for something that usually I don't think they would have. A lot of the messages and, and things that people have known existed in this country for a long time and have been trying to help the rest of the country understand that, it unfolded in front of everybody's eyes. This injustice has been there. It's not new, and I think people are starting to realize that. It's hard enough to have those conversations so that we try to understand where people are coming from, but when you can't do that face to face, it's, it's, it's even harder. One of my wishes is that we could have all been together during a time to that when we needed one another's support so much to get through that time. How can we find ways to find community? And I'm really proud of, 
I think the efforts we've made across this campus um, to find that community and to find ways to be supportive of each other. I've been talked to by my teachers and by my professors about Black Lives Matter, about COVID, about everything going on this year. And it's been more than heartwarming to know that they're, they're there for us. They're going to help us figure it out. They're making it clear that our voices do matter and how we feel is important. And that's the best thing you can possibly do is to say, I hear you, I hear where you're coming from, and if you're speaking, I'm listening. So in fall semester, we planned for about 65% of our classes in person and hybrid. We wanted to bring our first year students to campus and have them have an on-campus experience. So when you're dealing with that many classes and that many students, the challenge is putting all of the public health safeguards in place, making sure everything was the right distance, that they had the hand sanitation stations in front of every room. And that was a heavy lift for facilities. They had to literally, in a week, finish the going through every single space on campus. It was phenomenal. The symptom tracker, for example, if you were coming to campus, you would uh, upload how you were feeling that day and allow the contact tracing and the isolation folks to, to monitor what, was, what the state of campus is. All of these teams were working very, very hard to figure out how we're going to reboot our on-campus operations. At the same time, we had massive wildfires. It really was this convergence of all these things happening, right? The, the national picture was really horrendous. The sky was literally black and orange and raining ash, and we were running a testing site for a pandemic. One of the daily reports I received was how close the wildfires were to our mountain campus. All of the work of FEMA, the work of the firefighters, it was just extraordinary. They kept me posted every day and they protected our buildings. Truly, truly extraordinary, the work they did. We talk about resilience and we talk about rams taking care of rams. That's been demonstrated over and over and over and over during the last nine months. I think what's been so exciting and what I've heard our faculty really highlight is our students' commitment. They kept their spirits up. They supported one another. Our students were really magnificent. I think that this is a cool community that really respects each other and wears their masks. None of us can do this by ourselves. Even as a community, even as a university, we have to work together. I hope we can hold on to that sense of anything that gets thrown in our direction, we can meet that challenge as long as we hold together. I think it kind of put in perspective what problems are big and what problems are small and to live life with less of a focus on the small problems. I'm excited for people to kind of interact in the ways that they used to with a new sense of direction. Because these things that we talk about and these things that we can have more conversations about after that, once we're out of this neck of the woods and into that one, we can start to actually really make a lot more change. There is so much work that has to be done. I would hope that, um, that we would learn from what we have seen and that we would not go back I think it would be a tragedy if we went back to where we were pre-COVID. So it's not going to be the same. It's never going to be the same. But it can be better.